Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice to see all of you here this morning as we come together to, uh, to initiate uh, Catherine into the family of our Catholic Church. You know, and in doing this, of course, we're imitating our Lord Jesus Christ himself, who despite being born without any sin whatsoever, nonetheless had himself baptized in the River Jordan by his cousin John the Baptist in order to reveal himself as a son of God. So now, following his command, we now baptize Catherine into Christ, making her a child of God. So, uh, parents, what name have you given your child? Catherine Mary Beth Gary Glanders. Catherine Mary Beth Gary Glanders. And what are you asking of the church for, for Catherine? Baptism. Baptism. You've asked to have your child baptized. <clears throat> and in doing this, you're accepting the responsibility of bringing Catherine up in the practice of our Catholic faith. It's your duty to bring her up to live just as Christ taught us all to live by loving God above all and by loving our neighbor as ourself. Do you both clearly understand what you're asking of the church? We do. And godparents, are you ready to help these parents in their duty as Christian mother and father? Catherine, the Christian community now welcomes you with great joy. In the name of the church, I claim you for Christ our Savior by this sign of the cross, which I trace on your forehead. Who's dressed up there? History. Old school. Old school, yeah. So we have a first reading. This is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, who says, Dear brothers and sisters, are all of you unaware that we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were also baptized into his death? We were indeed buried together with Jesus through a baptism into his death, so that just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the power of the Heavenly Father, so all of us might one day live a new life. For if we've grown into union with Jesus through a death like his, we will also be reunited with Jesus in a resurrection like his. The word of the Lord. If you would mind standing for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me, so I tell you to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have taught you. And behold, I will be with you always until the end of the ages. The Gospel of the Lord. You can all be seated. I just want to say a very few words, of course. Uh, of course, Catherine's parents and her godparents went to a baptismal preparation class. But I do think it's always important in the sacrament of baptism just to remind all of us who are baptized uh, of the really importance of this day, not as a kind of an event that takes place and then it's finished until the next event, but really as a kind of a doorway and entrance into the spiritual life. And I know that, it, that very often because we as Catholics do baptize infants, that, that there's a tendency to think that way because obviously the child can't really begin to truly participate in Catholic life for a number of years before she can be brought to catechism. But, you know, baptism, of course, is the first of those three sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, and, and Eucharist, or First Communion, that all of us as Catholics are meant to have those three. The other sacraments are optional, so to speak. Nobody has to get married. Nobody has to, to uh, receive holy orders. But certainly those three are the three uh, sacraments that all of us are supposed to have. And the sacrament of baptism, of course, is the beginning of our Christian life. Our, it's our understanding in the church that just as the process of the birth through the mother is, a, is the introduction into the life of the body, so is the baptism an introduction into the life of the spirit. We know that, that, of course, Catherine and children, little small children, have no personal sins whatsoever, but that stain of original sin that we're, that we're born with through the, through the process of baptism, that we're given this sac sanctifying grace that helps us to struggle in our life against the tendency to sin, which is what original sin is, the tendency not to always do well. And then by calling upon the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of baptism, the child is then in a mystical way incorporated into the church. The church being, of course, the gathered people of God. And she, in this case, Catherine, has made a, a kind of a cell or a member of the mystical body of Christ, which is the church. 
though she won't remember this, it is our bel belief again in the church that, that the interior effect of the sacrament is to imprint a, a permanent character on the soul. And I, I suppose it's parallel in, our, in a way to that while Catherine can't speak now, that she's already gathering information into herself, isn't she? Like one day suddenly she'll speak, but that's not the day that she learned to talk, really. It's just the day that she accumulated this in such a way that then she can put it all together. And it's the same with the grace of the various sacraments, right? That even though it's an, it's an invisible sign, that nonetheless when you need the grace of baptism, you need the wisdom, the understanding, and all the gifts of the Spirit that the sacraments give, that then they become available to you as you mature in your life and as you grow in your moral and, and inner life. So, you know, and of course, Catherine's not isolated either. She's very fortunate. All children are born into some kind of families, but unfortunately some into extremely dysfunctional situations. It's always a great grace, you know, when I do these baptisms to, to recognize the, the, the great fortune that anyone has to be born into a family that's loving and caring and, and, and would even bring a child to, to baptism because it's just an, an, a sign that, you know, this child will be raised by people who love her and, and who will care for her and, and who want her to fulfill her full human potential. And so that's so important. She's not isolated. She really is part of this Christian family, your family. You know, our Catholic Church, which of course puts the family as about as high of a pedestal as you possibly can, and very rightfully does so, that always speaks of the family as the domestic church, which means that long before any child can be brought for any kind of what a catechism or any kind of school whatsoever, that it's really only in the bosom of the family that that child can learn what, what how to live, you know, I mean, I think just as you might tell a child, don't, you know, put your finger in the light socket or don't touch the hot stove because that will harm you, that every time you tell a child any simple thing like say please, say thank you, don't hit your brother, share your toy, that those aren't small things, that those are very significant things in the life of a child in terms of building up their spirit to understand how to live as a good person, which is a great responsibility first on family and parents. Uh, but I think just as we have to give our children healthy food so that their bodies will grow in a healthy way, and we know what happens if you don't, that also we have to nourish their minds by giving them intellectual stimulation as they're, even when they're very, very little, and also spiritual or moral stimulation, which is just the right teaching, like do this, don't do that, that's not good, hitting isn't nice, and, you know, things like that. So, you know, that's the way we nurture their spiritual lives and, and little by little bring them into this world that, you know, and then the growth of the sacrament. The sacrament grows in that person so that it really helps them to live a good life, which is, of course, all that we want for Catherine, right? Is that she have a good life, that she fulfill the purpose that God gave her in bringing her here. That's what we all want. So as we continue with the sacrament of baptism today, let's all together, all of us together, renew the, the promises of our own baptism made for us when we were small and ask the Holy Spirit to bring each one of us into a deeper life of faith. So dear brothers and sisters, let's ask our Lord Jesus to look lovingly on Catherine today, who is to be baptized on her parents, her godparents, and on all of her family. So Lord, we pray that by the mystery of your death and resurrection, this child may be bathed in light, Give to Catherine the new life of baptism and welcome her into your holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Through the sacrament of baptism and confirmation, we ask you, Lord, to make Catherine your faithful follower and a witness to your gospel. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask you, Lord, to lead Catherine by a holy life to the joys of God's eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you, Lord, to make the lives of Catherine's parents and godparents and all of her extended family great examples of faith to inspire her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you, Lord, to keep this family and all our families in your love. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we come to this sacrament today, we ask you to renew the grace of baptism in each one of us present here today. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these and all our prayers, which make in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is our Lord forever and ever. So this is the first anointing. This is anointing with the oil of catechumens. That's a, such an unfamiliar word, but a catechumen is a person who's uh, being presented for baptism. Obviously, in the early days of the church, that was always adults, and the process of leading up to baptism was usually a couple of years, a minimum of a year, but always a, about a couple of years. So they were very significant presence, the catechumens in the church. Uh, the first part of the Mass, which we call the Liturgy of the Word, was their Mass. It was called the Mass of the Catechumens. And then when you got to the Eucharist, they were all let out because you're not ready. You haven't received baptism. You're not ready for the Eucharist. So they would be 
formally let out. So we continue this today with children. So Catherine, for the next second and a half, is a catechumen. <laughs> <laughs> Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only son Jesus into the world to cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and to rescue all of us from the kingdom of darkness and to bring us into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray today for Catherine. We ask you to set her free from the effects of original sin, to make her a temple of your glory, and to send your Holy Spirit to dwell within her. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Catherine, I now anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. May Christ strengthen you with his power, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. This is actually on the chest, but I don't know if it can be open just a little bit. Okay. Maybe. It's a lot of trouble. Look at you, you're so nice. Very good. Yeah, yeah. We've had a oh, you like the back of them. So now we will be blessing this water. So Brothers and sisters, we now ask God to give uh, Catherine new life and abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, you give us your grace through these sacramental signs, which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In the sacrament of baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the beginning of all of life. At the very dawn of creation, your Holy Spirit breathed over the waters, making a, a order out of chaos and light out of darkness. Through the waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism, making an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Then through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people, Israel, out of slavery in Egypt to become an image of God's holy people. In the waters of the Jordan River, your son Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And then as he hung upon the cross, Jesus willed that water and blood should flow from his side as the beginning of all the sacraments. After his resurrection, Jesus told his disciples, go out and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we ask you, Heavenly Father, to look with love upon your church and to unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask you to give the water of this baptismal font the grace of your Son, Jesus. You created all of us in your own image and likeness. We ask you now to cleanse us from sin in a new birth to innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. And so we ask you, Heavenly Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this baptismal font. May all of us who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with Christ to newness of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. And now I'd like to ask you to all stand, and especially the godparents whose role this officially is, is to, uh, you know, to renounce sin and to profess the faith on behalf of Catherine, who can't do that for herself. So dear parents and godparents and of course all the family here who wish to join us in, in this profession of faith, you've all come here to present Catherine for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, Catherine is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On all of your parts, you must make it your constant care to bring Catherine up in the practice of our faith. See that the divine life which God is giving her is kept always safe to grow stronger in her heart. So if your own faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, I ask you to renew now with me the vows of your own baptism, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, because this is the faith of our church, and this is the faith in which Catherine is about to be baptized. So I ask you all, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of a child of God? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and the prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who was crucified, died, and was buried, who rose from the dead, and who is now seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in everlasting life? This is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We're proud to profess it in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, parents, once again, is it your will that Catherine should be baptized into the faith of this church, which we've all just together professed? It is. It is. All right, then I ask you to come forward in the godparents as well. Why don't you hold it? You can do like this. Mm -hmm. no. Do you want to hold this bowl under? It might be easier. Balance it. Catherine, let's touch it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is it? Is it okay? 
Catherine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There we go, good girl, good girl. <laughs> good. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has now freed you, Catherine, from the effects of original sin and given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. God has welcomed you into his holy people, the church. I now anoint you with the chrism of salvation, for just as Jesus Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you, Catherine, live always as a member of Christ's body, sharing Christ's everlasting life. So this is the second anointing with the oil of chrism, which is on, on the crown of the head. Dear Catherine, you've now become a new creation and you have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and your friends to help you by their word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. We can't improve this beautiful outfit. There we go. Look at you. God, parents will light this. Candle from the Paschal candle, please. Mm -hmm. Catherine, receive the light of Christ, your parents and godparents and all the family. This light is entrusted to all of you to be kept burning brightly for Catherine. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ today. She is to walk always as a child of the light. May she keep the flame of faith alive in her heart, and when the Lord comes, may she go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. So Catherine's now been reborn in the sacrament of baptism. She's now called a child of God, for indeed she is. In the sacrament of confirmation, she'll receive the fullness of God's Holy Spirit, and in the sacrament of Holy Communion, she'll share in the banquet of Christ's sacrifice, calling God her Father in the midst of the church. So now in Catherine's name, let's all pray together in those very same words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now may Almighty God, the Almighty Father, who filled the whole world with joy by giving us his only begotten son, Jesus, bless this newly baptized child, Catherine. May she be more, to grow to be more fully conformed to Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God, who gives life on earth and in heaven, bless the parents of Catherine. They thank her now for the gift that he's given them, them in her. And may they always show that gratitude in action by loving and caring for their children. And may Almighty God, who has given all of us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, generously bless everyone here who is God's faithful child. May we always live as God's people, and may God bless everyone here present with his peace. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wow, let's give Catherine a big hand.